Hey partners, welcome to this episode. We're gonna call it election day special. It's not actually election day, but it kind of is because this is the day that I went down and formally filed my papers to be a candidate for a seat I've held on the local school board twice already. So I'm an incumbent. What does that mean anyway, incumbent? Anyway, so moral of the story is I went down to Norwalk, California. Here's my gate pass. I filed my paperwork and I beelined it out here for French Valley, California, cultural capital of the world, to look at a guitar that was on Facebook Marketplace. Don't go there, don't look. Arch tops, don't look, there's never any there. And if you do look and you find something, wait two days so I can figure out whether I want it or not. But anyway, found a guitar that looks interesting on Facebook Marketplace in this highly populated area and beelined it out here. So I'm gonna go see James that's got this guitar. We're gonna see what it is. And then I gotta get in the car because I got a school board meeting tonight. We can't dilly-dally. I will tell you that this election stuff has gotten crazy. I'm gonna try not to break any laws today. I might skirt the law, kind of like I'm standing right on the line here. How's that side profile? Hollywood, you bet. I'm standing on the side here. I am not refuse. I'm not gonna stay here, but I'm standing right on the do not trespass line. And so, that said, I'm gonna fold up my camera because I see a farmer coming down the road with a shotgun on a tractor. Let's get out of here and go look at that guitar. All right, we're back in the shed. Some things change, some do not. What you saw there was actually a clip of me out in French Valley on the day I picked up two guitars. Now, what changes? Well, I have my campaign sign, I have my campaign shirt on, but other than that, I'm Ken. When I'm dressed up like you saw at the beginning, yeah, there's more Aquanet in the hair, and there's a chick flick teal tie on, but other than that, it's me, it's always me. Take that to the bank. So anyway, uh, I can't even believe this myself even now. So, like I said in the beginning, I went, pulled my papers online, decided I'm actually going to run. This will put me in 10 years of service. I already had two plus four. This is what serving on a school board does for you. Two plus four equals six plus four equals 10. Bingo. Quick. You see that? Um. So anyway, got half the day done. I'm thinking I'm going to go out to French Valley and look at a guitar. Now, I've been dealing with this person for a little bit, and this is the guitar I got. It's a K-Made. Got a few things to do with it. Hear that rattling? It's got a V-neck, which tells me it's late 30s early 40s. Where's my pointer? Oh, if you want to know about Econo guitars, Econo art tops, K's, harmony, stuff like that, I did a playlist up there. It'll kind of explain what they are, how cheaply they're made, and what kind of problems they have. And then the second video up there in that playlist is about what happens when you finally decide to be silly enough to give people money. Anyway, went out there, met a great uh, person, downsizing his guitars as a professional musician. A lot of professional musicians have these kinds of things laying around so they can just pull them out in a gig and slow it down and they're very interesting. Anyway, this is a great guitar made by Kay. Again, late 30s, early 40s. So I'm looking at this, I commit to this one. And then the person says, I got another guitar you might be interested in. Me interested in a guitar. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. So, I said, is it an arch top? You know. If it has F holes, I'm interested. If it's a uh, flat top, not so much. Now, I've done a couple flat tops. Let me throw away some cards here. I redid a guitar for Rob in Guitar 48, one of his first guitars. And let me give you a link to that right now. 
Um, and you can see how badly I messed that one up. It was messed up from the beginning. It was tore up from the floor up. Anyway, have a look at those links up there if they interest you. But the guy pulls out this guitar and given what the day was, given that I was actually pulling papers, I've done some political campaign videos that if you know me this way, and maybe if you're at all interested in local grassroots politics, I'm going to give you a link to my playlist about something I did called uh, School Board Insider. Have a look at that. Get ready. Get some popcorn. And sit down. This is, yeah, there's no comedy. It's just boom, right, right to the bone stuff. Anyway, so always controversy with me. Uh, I talk too much. I tell the truth too much. I'm, I'm not the average politician. So, what is the worst possible thing that you could align yourself with, especially if you're at national level politics in the United States? Well, I guess that would be that you are aligned with the Soviet Union, and especially Ukraine, with anything to do with your, <laughs> your election campaign, because I guess when those words come into it, there's some weird mind power or, or some collusion or something that's going on that you are able to trick voters. I don't know if the spy satellites or, or what it is. <laughs> I just sit on a small school board. Anyway, the guy pulls out a guitar that you're not going to believe. I couldn't believe it. I was afraid. Um, I've done work on the Nevada test site that I swore secrecy to. I'm starting to look around when this guitar comes out. I'm wondering who this guy is. I'm wondering if I'm not being set up. Anyway, let's get to the business at hand, comrades, and look at what's in the case. Okay, before we get going here, <laughs> look at this case. Um, real nice. Real nice. You know what? I'm going to do an episode about this case, and we're going to call it the crappiest guitar case ever. The crappiest guitar case ever. Watch for it. What's that all about? Well, it's going to be about tied to my grandpa Bub, who had a beer joint in northern Wisconsin, which is like the Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin... Wisconsin equivalent of a juke joint in Mississippi. Anyway, I'm losing my props here. Hang on. Them Don's pills aren't really working that well. Remember, remember that? Don's pills. My sponsor that they don't even know they're my sponsor. Anyway, my grandpa Bob had a beer joint in northern Wisconsin that had a two-story outhouse. And so this guitar case is going to be done up in a way as a tribute to the ridiculousness that is the sheer number of beer joints in northern Wisconsin. You're going to see this t-shirt pop up at the end of the video because I'm going to give a shout out to one of my Wisconsin comrades. <laughs> Don't you hate that word? We were raised in the 60s and 70s um, to cover ourselves with newspaper because I was going to um, protect us from the nuclear attack. So back then, the get under your desk and cover yourself with newspaper or Reynolds Wrap. We all had Reynolds Wrap and we didn't even have backpacks. Then. Anyway, I'm so far out in the weeds right now. But watch for it. Crappiest guitar case ever. Okay, so back to the day in French Valley. This guitar, already committed to it. Here comes the next guitar. Are you ready for this? Look at this. It's not an arch top. It's a flat top. And I look at it. And I say, oh, there's a bolt running through the neck. By the way. I had somebody go after me about running bolts through the neck. So, I look at it and say, okay, the neck is bolted on. The person tells me, no, it's built that way. I think, yeah, sure. 
and I was born wealthy too, but it turns out the person was right. Before we take a closer look at this guitar on the bench, I will tell you this. I looked inside and I looked at the headstock. That headstock says C C C P. Now, another thing you didn't know, when I was young, I was a stamp collector. And I would get stamps from all over the world and pin them in some kind of little book. And the stamps that said N O Y T A Noita C C C P were from guess where? That's right, Russia. They usually had ballistic missiles or some rocket or something on there that kind of said, hey, we're over here, we got all the bombs. You people over there trying to corrupt our world with your rock and roll music better look out. <laughs> Again, <clears throat> I'm a product, I guess literally, of the 1960s and saw all this that was happening. We were... You remember the Rocky movie where the guy was from Russia and he was like, yeah, <laughs> we were raised to think this is a very bad thing. You are not supposed to be in possession of this while they were taught over there that people like me were going to ruin their way of life and everything that was sacred to their world, which when you weigh them out, they were probably more right using me as the example than anyone. Anyway, this guitar <laughs> was built in Russia, so I am, on the day I'm filing my papers, running around being involved in a transaction with a guitar made in the Soviet Union. Let's take a look at this thing and get its story. Let's take a look at this thing starting at the back. You see this type of headstock on old resonators like a national. This is not a national. Um, you can see this neck is kind of wide and clunky, like maybe the guitars that were made at the United States Guitar Company in Jersey City, New Jersey. Great episode up there, what's in the case. Arch top with no F holes or sound holes. I think I'm way out of cards, but anyway. I want you to notice that the neck here seems to have a split and is detached from the body there's a gap right there and there's a it's completely detached from there so we'll talk about that in a minute but there's a strip of wood coming down through here um, there is what appears to be a hole with a screw in it and the neck is way up off of the deck of the guitar and action is okay. Um, by the way, this has nylon strings. The back of it's a solid piece of wood. Looks good. There is no binding. The sides match the back. Don't you hate guitar flybys? Again, there is no binding. Let's take a look at the front. Okay, starting at the headstock, there is the other side of what you saw. Um, tuning machines look like this. Again, old resonator style stuff. Open gear tuners. Slotted to fit through here. The one thing I want you to see is up there it says CCCP. You see that? That means Russia. Okay? Good fingerboard, fret job is okay, even now nothing's sticking out. But the most interesting part about this, let's get this in the device now, where we can lay it down, and zoom in a little bit, lower the camera. How's that? There we go. Okay. Nice big wide bridge. It has nylon strings on it. It's got a slotted place for the strings to come across. The bridge is actually right here. Um, but I want you to notice that this appears to be laminated. So you've got strips of... This is actually spruce, by the way. 
strips laminated this wide. So instead of using spruce that was um, one piece or bookend matched up, they just use these strips. You still get a spruce top, uh, the rosette around the sound hole is good. The end of the fingerboard is curved a little bit. Again, no binding, it's just painted on binding, but sounds good, resonates good. Wow, a slide can be used on nylon strings. So I want to take a couple uh, minutes to talk about this right here. Back to the neck. You see that there is a hole there, what appears to be a screw. It actually looks like kind of the same type of head that you would find on the drum kit. In fact, it is. That fits in there like this. So why would we want this? Well, guess what? This thing has an adjustable neck. So when I turn this, watch what happens to the strings. Do you see that the neck is actually coming up and when I turn it the other way the neck comes down. This thing has a fully adjustable neck that allows you to adjust the string height. I wish I had this setup on all of my arch tops that I redo instead of trying to pitch things back and do re-glues and re neck resets. This is an incredible system. And it goes right back to where it was, highly versatile. I like that about this guitar. Next, I'm going to set this up where we can zoom in and kind of see what's going on in there because this thing is full of labels. Okay, the most interesting part of the story, there are two labels in there. One, two. Before I tell you the story, I want to tell you a couple little things that are going to be handy. If you're going to be buying guitars, you want one of these. It extends, it spins around, it lets you go down into the F hole of a guitar with a companion tool this light it extends it spins around and it is illuminated and if you are lucky you would be looking at me right now but i don't guess you are anyway we're going to take this we're going to put it down in here and spin it back and let it hang and illuminate those and uh, notice it doesn't mess with the string there we go worst plan you've ever heard Anyway, let's zoom in now. Okay. There is a diamond-shaped sticker over there and another tag up there that has some Russian writing on it that I can't read. So I turn to my friend Wukash, Wukash, and... Poland for a translation without that loud truck noise in the background. Again, Acton, loud truck, lift kit, wealth. Regular truck, not wealth. So my friend Wukash did some research and found a complete sticker like the one on the left. You see that there? And he's an artist and he sent me a rendering, one of his artistic interpretations of that sticker. Anyway, that sticker is what's there on the left, partially covered by the big sticker. Now, here's what Wukash told me about the translation of what's going on with this guitar. First off, the guitar was made in a factory where they constructed several different types of musical instruments and the factory was named after an individual named A.V. Lunacharsky. A.V. Lunacharsky. 
the factory was established in 1926 to replace a brand named K.N. Schroeder, S-C-H-R-O-E-D-E-R. -E -E they planned to make guitars in several Russian-type folk instruments. What happened about 1948 is the factory started to focus less on guitars and more on building harps. And at one point in the 1950s, the plant had more than 1,500 employees producing over 600,000 instruments per year. In the 1960s and 70s, there were some instruments coming out of this factory here that were conquering international exhibits and were highly sought after by musicians worldwide. But again, finding those instruments back then was difficult. So finally, in 1993, the enterprise was privatized. It's kind of funny. You can hear my voice even though everything is being dampened with this light. You can hear my voice resonating in the guitar. So a joint stock company was formed um, to found a company called Company of Folk Sharpened Instruments, or ARFA. At that point, you saw the breakup of the Soviet Union, you saw the states going back unto themselves, and there were economic issues where the wages were falling, the craftsmen who were woodworkers and the like were going off to somewhere else because of the falling wages. The instruments, the quality of the instruments was declining. And finally, the work of putting the guitars together in this factory were done basically by prisoners who really didn't know what they were doing, so the quality of the instruments fell. By 2005, the factory closed, and all properties that went with the factories were sold to commercial interests. This guitar, this very guitar here, was made by the date stamp right there on May 5th, which is odd. May 5th is Tammy's birthday, or Cinco de Mayo, May 5th, 1973. That is the story behind my guitar. I would have never been able to put it together without the help of my friend Wukash in Poland. Thank you, Wukash. All right. <laughs> Isn't that something? You can pick these things up on eBay for, I don't know, the equivalent of $75, $100. They're going to come in from the Ukraine, so you're going to spend another equivalent of $80 to $100. US. Um, and so you could have a guitar that's like this with the adjustable neck. That's the ingenious part of this. They... They sound okay. It goes on forever. That might be part of the Russians recording this and taking and getting strategic information about what all this is to try to figure out America. If you're doing that, dude, you're way up the wrong tree. Anyway, comrades, I want to tell you about one of my comrades from Wisconsin where Grandpa Bub's two-story outhouse is. Yeah, so... There is a person that has played a resonator slide guitar without doing it in Grafton, Wisconsin in the 1930s. His name is Aaron Lee Kaplan. He's in the central part of Wisconsin. And I'm going to give you a link down below in the info section about his music. There's an album called Dairyland because that's right, America's Dairyland right up there. Wisconsin is America's Dairyland. So these commercials that you're seeing about happy cows live, yeah, happy cows live in Wisconsin. If you're hearing anything else, it's a, it's a complete lie. It's almost as much of a lie as Soviet propaganda being pushed through this guitar right here. Anyway, Aaron... Lee Kaplan has a record out 
called Dairyland. And on that album, you're going to hear acoustic stuff. There's no message. There's no singing. There's no propaganda. It's just the guy playing uh, a resonator guitar. I'm going to give you a link below. You're going to want to get that. Again, he's from Wisconsin. I grew up in Wisconsin in a place called Waupon, Wisconsin. I didn't grow up in Waupon. I grew up at Waupon, and anybody that's from Wisconsin will know exactly what I just said. Yeah, stepdad was a prison guard there, which explains all this mess, but yeah, I grew up at Waupon, not in Waupon. So that said, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I will say that the last episode that I did about what's in the case, and there will be a link to that. I can't find Chick Flick T.O. Pointer. Where did you go? There you are. Always loyal, always ready. I think there's some jealousy from Chick Flick T.O. Pointer about the Chick Flick T.O. tie that I referenced earlier. But anyway, up there, episode, I use the word Socratic so much that people now have banned it from the English language and I will contact my friends in Russia and have them ban it from their language as well. So, hey, give me a like, <laughs> subscribe if you haven't. You're only going to get this kind of ridiculous garbage waste of life here. That said, I will see you next time. Don't forget to give Aaron's music a listen. See you soon. All right, guys, if you are still here, you get to see the bonus footage because this is not the only Russian-Ukrainian guitar anywhere near me. In fact, I found another one. In fact, it's much more evolved. This one is the Neanderthal of guitars compared to this one, and guess where it was? That's right, at Guitar 48 in Ventura, and our friend Rob at Guitar 48 is going to pop open a case and show you something really cool that has the same label inside and the same headstock label somewhere else on the guitar. But this one looks like something straight out of a Jetsons episode, Space Age, Sputnik, whatever you want to call it. Let's finally close this episode out and go see what Rob has to say about his Russian built guitar. Rob, tell us what you got here, comrade Rob. This goes back to before the breakup of the Soviet Union. This is what this, uh, this CCCP, that stands for USSR in, in, uh, in their lettering. So that's uh, kind of the same thing yeah, we see same, here same on my, this, yeah. the head of this acoustic guitar. And uh, I'm not sure what uh, I'm not sure what this word means on the headstock, but everything about this is just a little quirky, from the, the push button uh, pickup controls to the uh, look at this little triangular uh, string tree there, and um, yeah, like right out of a Soyuz rocket. Uh, yeah, look at that. Kind of a funky, uh, I guess we call that a burst. It's going from yellow to natural. <laughs> and then you got these uh, beautiful strap retainers here. Um, I guess chrome strap buttons were in short supply. I don't know. Yeah. It actually plays and sounds really good. So, uh, interesting piece. <laughs> Novelty item for sure. If you're shooting a video and you want something in your video that nobody's going to know what you're playing, I'll make a statement with this one. Yeah. Did we supply those knobs? Yeah, we supplied the knobs because there's, I think, uh, there was a couple broken ones. Okay. So we put on something that looked uh, maybe just as glitzy. Maybe the white ones would do better on there. Yeah, it could be. You think so? Uh, we could try that. Man, Rob, Rob's got everything in here, I swear. <laughs> now he's got the Soviet Union in here. Do you think that if I, since I'm a 
I'm, I'm like a, a school board candidate. Do you think if I played this guitar, it would like I throw, think, throw the election, or, or what I do think you think? I think if they saw you playing this guitar, they um, they might have to like just give you. You'd be run on a post. No one would be able to to compete with you.